Dear viewers, greetings. In this video, we are going to see about the diphtheria causing bacteria, Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Uh, first, general characteristics of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Uh, the Cornibacterium diphtheriae is a gram positive pleomorphic rods and it is non motile in nature and its size is around 2 micrometer in length and it belongs to the family Cornibacteriaceae. Capsules absent, endospores absent, and metachromatic granules are present. The mode of respiration observed in Cornibacterium diphtheria is aerobic respiration or facultative anaerobic respiration. The optimum temperature required for the cultivation of Cornibacterium diphtheria is 36 degrees Celsius and the optimum pH is 6.8. And regarding the habitat, a uh, cornea bacterium diphtheria is only found in the mouth, throat, nose, skin, body secretions, and wounds of infected persons. Animals do not easily contract uh, diphtheria from human beings, and the animals naturally have immunity against the cornea bacterium diphtheria. Regarding the discovery, uh, the cornea bacterium diphtheria was first discovered by the German bacteriologist Edwin Klebs and Frederick Lofer in 1884. So, the Cornibacterium diphtheria is also known as Klebs Lofer bacillus. Subspecies of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Uh, four subspecies of Cornibacterium diphtheriae are recognized. They are Cornibacterium diphtheriae subspecies mitis, Cornibacterium diphtheriae subspecies intermedius, Cornibacterium diphtheriae subspecies gravis. And finally, Cornibacterium diphtheria subspecies Belfanti. Among the four subspecies, uh, first three subspecies like Mitis, Intermedius, and Gravis are toxic, and the four subspecies Belfanti is non toxic in nature. The four subspecies differ slightly in their colony morphology and biochemical properties, uh, such as uh, ability to metabolize certain nutrients. Disease transmission of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Respiratory diphtheria spreads from person to person, usually through respiratory droplets, through coughing or sneezing. Cutaneous diphtheria is spread through direct contact with skin lesions of an infected host. On rare occasions, diphtheria can be transmitted through indirect contact like uh, fomites, and transmission can occur through food vehicles such as milk or other dairy products. The ability of the microorganisms to cause the disease is called as virulence. The term virulence was first coined by Louis Pasteur. Virulence factors are the factors which are responsible for causing an infection in human beings. Here, the Cornibacterium diphtheria produce two types of virulence factors. The first virulence factor is Pili and the second virulence factor is diphtheria toxin. The pili adheres to the host cell and cause infection and the diphtheria toxin is a type of exotoxin and cytotoxin in nature. There are two types of diphtheria toxin that is type A and type B and in pathogenesis diphtheria toxin enters cytoplasm and inhibits the protein synthesis in the eukaryotic cell or human cells. The incubation period for Cornibacterium diphtheria is 2 to 5 days and the infective dose required for causing infection is variable. Pathogenesis of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. The pathogenicity of Cornibacterium diphtheriae includes three distinct phenomena. First, adherence to the host cell by pili. Second, Invasion of the local tissues of the throat, which requires colonization and subsequent bacterial proliferation. The third, toxigenesis. The Cornibacterium diphtheria produce diphtheria toxin, causes death of eukaryotic cell and tissues by inhibition of protein synthesis in the cells. Although the toxin is responsible for the lethal symptoms of the disease. The Cornibacterium diphtheriae appears in three substrains of different generation times. Uh, for example, Gravis 
60 minutes, intermediate 100 minutes, and mite is 180 minutes. The faster the strain grows, then the faster the iron is depleted and the sooner the toxic effects of the diphtheria occurs. The clinical presentation of diphtheria is determined by site of infection, immune status of the patient and virulence of the organism. Uh, diphtheria is caused by Cornibacterium diphtheriae and the diphtheria as a disease present itself in two forms. The first form is respiratory diphtheria and the second form is cutaneous diphtheria. The respiratory diphtheria affects the respiratory system and the cutaneous diphtheria affects the skin. The first clinical disease caused by Cornibacterium diphtheriae is respiratory diphtheria. A cornibacterium diphtheriae multiply locally on epithelial cells in the pharynx and initially causes localized damage as a result of exotoxin activity. Symptoms include sore throat, low-grade fever, muscle weakness, loss of appetite and enlargement of lymph nodes which is located in the neck. A grayish colored membrane that is a thick pseudomembrane may form over a nose, throat and tonsils, making it difficult to breathe or swallow. Pseudomembrane composed of bacteria, lymphocytes, plasma cells, fibrin and dead cells. As the patient recover after approximately one week course of disease, the membrane dislodges and is expectorated. Systemic complications in patients with severe disease primarily involve the heart and the nervous system. Evidence of myocarditis can be detected in the majority of the patients with diphtheria and typically developing one to two weeks. Uh, symptoms can present acutely, uh, progressing in severe disease to congestive heart failure, cardiac arthritis, and death. Finally, uh, neurotoxicity is proportional to, proportional to the severity of the primary disease, which is influenced by the patient's immunity. The second clinical disease caused by the Cornum bacterium diphtheria is cutaneous diphtheria. Cutaneous diphtheria is also called as desert sore. Uh, cutaneous diphtheria is acquired through uh, skin contact with the other infected person and the organism colonizes the skin and gains entry into the subcutaneous tissue through breaks in the skin. A papule develops first and then evolves into a chronic non-healing ulcer, uh, sometimes covered with a grayish membrane. Staphylococcus aureus or Streptococcus pyogenes is also frequently present in the wound. Laboratory diagnosis of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. The first method is microscopic examination. Under gram staining, Cornibacterium diphtheriae was observed as violet colored gram positive rod with angular and palisade arrangements that creates a Chinese character. And in motility test, non motile cells were observed. And in metachromatic granule staining, bluish black metachromatic granules are observed. Uh, this image shows the gram staining of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Uh, this image shows the metachromatic granules of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. The, here the bluish black contents are the metachromatic granules. Uh, next, colony morphology of Cornibacterium diphtheriae on culture medium. In blood agar, uh, the Cornibacterium diphtheriae is gamma hemolytic in nature and in McConkey agar it shows non-lactose fermenting colonies. The cysteine tellurate blood agar or CTBA is, the, is one of the selective medium for Cornibacterium diphtheriae. In this medium, Tellurate inhibits the growth of uh, most upper respiratory tract bacteria and gram-negative rods and is reduced by Cornibacterium diphtheriae and the producing characteristic gray to black color. The degradation of the cysteine by Cornibacterium diphtheriae cysteinous activity produces a brown halo around the colonies. And the next confirmatory or selective medium is Tinsdale medium. And this Tinsdale medium is the best medium for recovering Cornibacterium diphtheriae in clinical specimens. 
but it has a short shelf life and requires addition of Hoss serum. And in this medium, Cornibacterium diphtheria produce brown to black halo around the collis. Biochemical test for Cornibacterium diphtheria identification. Catalase test positive, Authorase test negative, Urease test negative, Glucose fermentation positive, Maltose fermentation positive, Nitrate reduction positive, Cystinase production positive, Pyrazine amidase activity positive. Next, toxigenicity testing for Cornibacterium diphtheriae. All isolates of Cornibacterium diphtheriae should be tested for the production of exotoxin or diphtheria toxin. Uh, the gold standard for detection of diphtheria toxin is an in vitro immunodeficient assay by ELK alternately double deficient test or ELK test. An alternative method is detection of the endotoxin gene using a polymerase chain reaction or PCR based uh, nucleic acid amplification method. Finally, ELISA can be used to, to detect diphtheria toxin from clinical cornibacterium diphtheria. Finally, Treatment and Prevention of Cornibacterium diphtheria Infection Penicillin or Erythromycin or Macrolides is used to eliminate Cornibacterium diphtheria and terminate toxin production. Infections treated with diphtheria antitoxin is used to neutralize the diphtheria toxin. Immunization of patients with diphtheria toxide stimulates the protective antibodies and prevents the infection. And finally, administration of diphtheria vaccine and booster shots to susceptible population. Dear viewers, that's all about the bacteria, cornibacterium diphtheriae. Thank you for your support. Thank you.